So my study looked at the risk and the trend of patients um, getting ischemic strokes, uh, especially those migraine patients. So after our study, we found that there has been an increasing trend in a very significant increasing trend in patients with uh, migraines, irrespective of aura, mm -hmm. um, of having ischemic strokes. So whether you have migraine with aura or without aura, there has been an increasing trend over the last few years, at least from 2008 to 2014. Now, literature says that there is at least two times the risk of patients with um, aura with migraine uh, to have an ischemic stroke compared to those without an aura. So this has been postulated as uh, cerebral hyperreactivity um, or cortical depression causing some kind of um, unknown uh, mechanisms. So it's still unknown the exact reason why, but this is the finding. So there are meta-analysis which uh, I think the final number is that patients with aura have 1.57 times the risk of having ischemic stroke than those without an aura. So that was one of the findings from our study. We found that there has, there has been an increasing trend over, the, over those six years, 2008, 2014, irrespective of the aura status. The second thing we looked at was what are the predictors? Are there any variables that can tell us how much or how, um, what are the odds of someone having a migraine to have an ischemic stroke? Are there factors which can affect that, right? So the things that we found uh, from our study, not all of which can be explained, are um, evidence of a patent for aminoveil. So as you know, patent for aminoveil is uh, one of the, the most co uh, common causes of cryptogenic stroke. So it makes sense why uh, cryptogenic stroke or ischemic strokes in general would be a higher risk in patients with PFO with migraine. Uh, it kind of makes sense that way. Additionally, we also found that patients with PFO, even if they have been treated, have a higher risk of ischemic strokes. Uh, so it's the mere, we cannot uh, explain how that is, uh, we cannot explain the relation or how it's uh, exactly significant, but at least this is the finding. Uh, and uh, like I said before, one of the pros of an administrative database is if we get all our variables right, all the ICD codes right, which we have tried to do our best, uh, if we get all this right, then uh, the patient number is huge. We have about 4 million patients that we can study. So the significance value, the p-values are extremely small, less than 0 0.0001, which makes the study very strong. However, because it is an administrative database, there are a lot of things unaccounted for, you know, why patients are admitted, or was there an un other underlying cause, or was there some um, things that were changed for billing purposes. So. Uh, these things are totally unpredictable, so this is what we can do with what we have. Um, another significant uh, report that we had seen was uh, patients who have been chronically anticoagulated have, or with migraine, with or without aura, have a significantly lower risk of stroke. This makes sense, again, because anticoagulation is one of the protective um, uh, features or uh, one of the protective mechanisms that we give to patients to uh, to prevent stroke for prophylaxis of stroke. Um, so whether those patients are why those patients needed anticoagulation is not what that's unknown for us. So again, another problem with the administrative database. So that's unknown to us. But this is what we um, have seen, and that is what I can report. Right. Uh, a surprising finding that I found, and I plan to discuss it at the meeting also today, is. We know that women or the female sex in um, uh, gender in general have um, a relatively higher hypercoagulable state. Um, so ideally or, or naturally we would expect a higher risk of thromboembolic events or like a thrombotic events in them so or a higher risk of ischemic stroke in them. However, in our study we found that female sex and gender have a, or is a predictor of a lower risk of ischemic stroke in patients with migraine. So that's something that still cannot be explained, but this all goes to show that um, migraine by itself is a very gender specific uh, and gender variant um, disease. Um, the, the 
the temporal profile, the risk factors are very different in males and females. So the studies that have been done in men cannot be reproduced or at least cannot be extended to that in women. And I feel that more research has to be done gender specifically to see why women have a lower risk um, or why women with migraine have a lower risk in, um, of having ischemic stroke.